guys um happy tuesday i hope that you guys have all had the most amazing easter weekend uh i spent most of my time documenting my wardrobe and eating a lot of chocolate and a lot of things that contain cheese and have continued eating the things that have just had cheese and chocolate um so today we've got a very special guest andrew Leal, who started waggle and i am bringing him in Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine yourself. Good, good. Did you have a good cool. Easter? Um, it was okay. I actually, unfortunately, spent quite a bit of it actually on my back. No. So, yeah, I was uh, trying to trim my poor little cat, Duchess, who she's quite an elderly cat, so she's not so great at her upkeep. So she got quite matted and then just from actually leaning over to give her like her trim i wrecked my back so but yeah i guess it wouldn't be that much different to what i would have done actually under the circumstances well i definitely spent most of my time just eating cheese and chocolate nice. and yeah and i'm feeling a little bit squidgy so i definitely now need to take on home yeah. exercise to the full <laughs> So, Andrew, uh, could you please introduce yourselves to the LBD family? Sure. What are we looking for? Who I am, what I'm doing now, or just the background? Yes, who you are, what do you do, uh, cool. and, yeah, and what, on what journey brought you to create Waggle? Cool. So, yeah, um, I, I guess, originally South African, as I'm sure the accent sort of gives me away. Um, I moved here like five years ago, uh, sort of with the entire family. We come from a very entrepreneurial family as it is. So back in South Africa, we mainly actually distributed credit card machines. So probably not the most funnest, soundest thing that one could ever do, but great experience on that. Then when we got here, we actually carried on on the entrepreneur side of things. So I tried to start uh, a furniture business with my brother, um, which really didn't go well at all. Um, so we, we kind of put that on hold. I then sort of just realized that I actually didn't quite have sort of the same network as I do in South Africa. So I then went and did my MBA. And during the MBA, just a friend mentioned what a pain they were having with pet insurance. And, you know, is and I don't know, I guess as an entrepreneur, when anybody says that they're having a problem with something, my ears always like perk up. Um, I was interested in the whole insure tech sort of idea of life sort of saw it as the next wave of fintech that had been going through so at that time i was really interested in like bitcoin and all that sort of stuff that was floating around at the time so when i heard that um i was kind of like cool that sounds like exactly you know so something that i could get myself involved in from an entrepreneur side i always want like two things are really important one is they have to be fun because as I say, I, I sold credit card machines for a lot of my life and that was boring as ever. Um, and then the second one is going to be challenging. So the insurance side is extremely challenging. Like it's something I've never done before. So it was just great to like learn something completely new. Um, so yeah, with those two things in mind, I was like, cool, let's, let's go do something different in pet insurance. So we launched Waggle. And how did you launch Waggle? Did you find someone that had an experience with pet insurance or someone that was like, oh my God, I love this idea. Let's do this together. Um, do you have a co-founder? I do. I do. Actually, um, it's, been, it's been a strange journey because a lot of people have actually come along the way. But certainly I had a lot of help out originally uh, during my MBA. There was um, a guy on the course that actually was in insurance. So he sort of helped me in the initial stages of just getting to understanding like how does insurance actually work and how you know that aspect then um i met my co-founder really in the early stages um his name's ross ross was actually on the apprentice so um yeah, and he, yeah exactly that's actually the only reason he's my co-founder it's just no nah, i'm kidding he <laughs> um he so yeah, he, he was actually looking at doing his own app on pets in sort of like the training aspect. So there was quite a lot of, um, I guess the two of us sort of had like a commonality in that regard. Um, 
it, you know, still to this day, like if you had said that he was actually going to be my co-founder, I would have never told you that on the day. But it just seemed like it was a good fit from the get-go. And since then, yeah, we've sort of carried on on that relationship whereby I guess I handle more sort of the business and the insurance side. And his background is very much product and tech. So he handles all of our builds. Very cool. And how yeah. many people are in your team? We are now up to 11. Oh, wow. And when did you start? So we started this... Uh, so officially, I guess, because insurance was tricky, um, we started at the end just as I'd finished my actual MBA. So the actual time when everything was registered was probably in September 2017. But it took us a year to get ourselves like an underwriting agreement, all the boring stuff in insurance, like regulated, I guess, is the way to describe that. Uh, so we actually only went live in December 2018. So we've been going for just over a year. Wow, congratulations. And to build a team with 11. Um, being a tech sort of ourselves, that's super impressive. So yeah. what makes you different to other pet insurers? Because I I used to use Direct Line and now I use Waggle. Um, no. What makes you different? So I, I guess it, there's a general sense, obviously, with insurance that any insure tech would be saying that they're trying to do. Insurance has always been like, it, it's inherently been like a stressful purchase. Like most people don't know what's going on. And for a large part, I guess we, we sort of tackle it the same way as we just want to make it just easier, simpler and, you know, take all that like stress out of it. So we're very tech focused, as you mentioned. So I guess that's the big differentiator in our team. We're actually more product with the more product people than marketing people. So everything's being built from scratch. And what that's allowed us to do is just like simplify the customer's journey. So we just make it a lot easier. We also take the approach of being customer first and foremost. So what that means is like we wouldn't sell anything that we wouldn't buy. So, you know, from that perspective, you're always building something that people actually do find useful. And it allows you to really simplify it down to be like, great, I, I wouldn't want to sell anything but this. Um, and then... I guess the other differentiator for us is like just everything just becomes simpler. So claims is all online. You get to track it. You can actually see it as kind of like a delivery room. So you can actually see it through the stages. Uh, we, because it's just that much, it's all digital. We are able to speed up the process. And in that regard, on the backside, you actually have a customer champion. So that customer champion is dedicated to you. So you don't ever have to worry about speaking to one person and then being hopped to another person and stuff like that. It's just... You That's have an one thing. I, I, when Lily went to the vet once, I had I literally spoke to ten different people from Direct Line, and you just get so frustrated that you actually sucks, know, right? I'm going to give up. Yeah. So you know, th this way, I mean, and this is the thing with technology is it allows you to actually just speed up your internal processes, which allow you to add cool features like that. And then I guess our last bit to waggle, which is our, our key differentiator, is our membership platform. So essentially we hated the idea that you pay this like monthly fee in pet insurance and you get absolutely no nothing else in return so we included a membership platform and that membership platform allows you to sort of get like perks and benefits from our pet partners so and that's food partners um we've recently partnered with a, a lot called first vet so that means you can actually have video calls with vets before having to go off to the vet Oh, wow. So Very during good. this time, yeah, that's a pretty big win in, in this yeah. day and age. So you can just, you, you don't have to run off to the vet. Um, and yeah, that will be like built out to include more services. So speaking to trainers, sort of, yeah, anywhere on the pet scope. Yeah, might, might need to go to trainer for Lily and Luna. Nice. <laughs> during, during isolation, they've become very naughty. And my, my, um, my tactics is certainly not working. Uh, so during COVID, um, and John, at that point, have you noticed any like interesting data come out of it regarding pets? So yeah, I mean, it was it was always obviously nerve wracking. I think everyone, every business probably went through this the same sort of like cycle of just not knowing what was going to happen to your business. Um, with ours, it, it was really strange. After every single time a lockdown got uh, sort of more restrictions came in place, that took a toll on our business. But weirdly enough, our, our like numbers like went back to normal. And essentially what we learned is actually people during this isolation period were now looking at buying puppies more than ever. So 
Uh, yeah, as it, as it kept going, we actually saw our numbers increase and we we're like, wow, what is actually going on there? And yes, it turns out that people are literally turning to pets to get them through this form of isolation. So I did a Google trend the other day and actually this, the search term puppy has been at its absolute highest uh, since for the last five years. Wow. That's yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It's, so normally it, it's quite a... It's quite a like normal cycle in that you'll see a lot of people buy pets in the summer and then towards Christmas, like Christmas puppies. But yeah, you'll all of a sudden see this weird spike that came up in March, April. Oh wow! So there's gonna yeah. so when, when we're all out of isolation, these parks are gonna be filled with COVID pups. Exactly, <laughs> and it's yeah. You know, I mean, I guess the thing is, I wonder if it it will stay that way. My bit is I, I hope people keep getting puppies. Yeah, it could be. I mean, whenever I see a puppy in the park, I'm like, can I have another one to my, <laughs> <laughs> to my duo? You can um, have this one. No, kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got, um, you have a cat called Duchess, don't you? I do. She's in the basket there. She's a rescue. She's 13 years old, so she's quite a grumpy little girl. Mm. But, yeah, very <laughs> sweet. Um, very very sweet and um, during COVID have you um started any hobbies that you haven't done for a while or played with some new tech so I think you'd be impressed with this Maria I actually started yoga which I'm so wow. sad I've never done before in my life it's absolutely <laughs> awesome who knew always kind of judged yoga people until this this COVID happened and now I'm like totally a yogi and you finally uh, with your mindfulness yeah everything like just afterwards i actually feel like a different person i'm like hey i can oh, actually I go do that. stuff yeah it's been good i've tried resistance band training which is like sort of okay i guess that's not bad have you got but... a special app or platform that you're tuning in for this so with yoga I i'm bad i think i'm like a groupie it's uh adrian i think like everybody every single time i mention that name everyone's like oh yeah yeah so, um, I've never heard about have, you, have you not heard? No. Okay, so try Adrian. That seems like everyone's starting point from what okay, I've heard. Okay, well, I'll definitely do that and um, we'll put the link with the, the podcast info. And then on to our last question, Andrew. Shoot. What is your one wardrobe tip? Nice. I was actually quite stumped when I thought you might ask me this. Um, <laughs> I guess I am... I'm a minimalist, so I would actually just talk like that. Uh, so I actually look at like, probably I, I go on a seasonal basis and every season, if anything, I'm not, if I haven't worn it in like a month, I actually donate it. It's actually out of my, out of my oh, wardrobe. That's really impressive. Yeah. I so I actually. over the weekend and there were some options. I was like, haven't worn this in a while. I was like, I might. <laughs> no, my, yeah, mine really is like really to the lowest point I possibly can. So, and then my other one that I, I which I think has been the coolest thing that I, I love doing now. So I hate, and I'm not a big shopper. So it's actually going to a shop, trying everything on and then just ordering it online. Much cooler. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> so I that figured out- the work? No, but then I don't have to car carry everything everywhere. So okay. I essentially like do my shop, come home and be like, cool, five clicks of a button and I've like purchased autumn and I'm done. Well, you know what? I would do that and get the cheeky discount. <laughs> That's my first Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and they do, they actually give you discounts for doing it online. Yeah, exactly. They reward you for this laziness. I'm like, cool, I'm totally okay to do that. <laughs> Well, I love that. And I especially love the fact that you've been giving away to charity because more people need to do that because we really don't utilize our wardrobe. Um, I'm kind of interested in like, how many items you do and do you have in your wardrobe? Because if you do that as a monthly expense, you must be quite on top of it. No, I am. I, I'm actually quite OCD. Like, it's not good. You'll even see all my shirts are like colored correctly. So like from white all the way through to dark. Same no. with pants and everything. So I, I'm like very much on top of my wardrobe, if that oh, helps. My wardrobe looks like a tie-dye is just like broken out. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I would say like mine is. It's like, it is organized in my mind, but definitely for any spectator, <laughs> they would look at it like, you know. So I don't know about you, but if anyone touches my wardrobe, even if it's like chaos, that still kills me because I'm like, I know where everything is and how it looks. I'd imagine you have the same 
thing yeah. going with yeah. yours. Like I know where everything is, so it's fine. I definitely know when my friends have like come over for dinner and they've snooped into my wardrobe. It's very telling. <laughs> Let I know, know right? That I haven't had to have that. <laughs> so my wardrobe is finally safe. <laughs> so while... I have the same problem when people move stuff around of mine. I, th I think they don't think that I'm not going to know, but I'm like, I know. You moved it. <laughs> and I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, anyways, thank you so much, Andrew, for your time. Cool. Thanks a little more about Waggle. Again, I will put more information on the podcast info. For, and, any, and if anyone has any pets that do not have insurance, definitely have to waggle. The benefits are Where amazing. Your guys. Um, really cool. And yeah, you, yeah it's, it's the best one to go to. So thank you, Andrew. Cool. Thanks, Marina. This was fun. <laughs> Bye. Bye.